Mind your step. Important research happening here. <sighs> Could you stand a little to the left? Trees? Uh, no. No way. Kelton is actively ruining my career. There's whatever this thing is he's on about, he's just doing it to make himself look good with the higher-ups. I'm not... Oh, yeah? You think so? Wow. Thanks for that. Oh. Uh, he really won't let this go, will he? Hmm. Maybe I can make this work in my favor. Okay. You know what? I'll hand over the data. But I'm only going to do so after you've helped me secure a better position in MAST. Wait, really? Wow. Okay. I'll follow your lead. But I wish handling our tree issue didn't involve... I've gotten a few bad performance evaluations in the last couple of years. Totally un... I found a back door into the MAST network so I could make some changes to my personnel file. But the only way to get access is from the terminal in her apartment, which is kind of... locked. <laughs> Sorry. That's not on the table. From where I'm standing, kind of seems like it is. It's not that I don't want to do the right thing. Okay, look, look. Just hear me out, all right? I really need this to happen. If you do this for me, I can make it worth your while. I'll throw in some extra credits for you, okay? A nice little bonus. But first, you need to get into the chief engineer's apartment. Fine, fine, you win. Just get out of my sight. And tell Kelton to stuff it. Keep running into each other like this. You might as well be put on the mast feet roll. I hope you have the data. It's really quite crucial. Wonderful. I see you have the gift of the gab. <laughs> I hope that Emilio wasn't too insufferable. I'm sorry if this was complicated. I'd prefer to remain unaware of the details in the event that it comes up later. And I suppose I'd better verify the data make sure Emilio didn't double-cross me. But you have once again come through for me. And I appreciate it. Thank you for your assistance. Life is treating you well. Let me. Hey there. Always nice to see a new face. <laughs> oh boy. I didn't mean for you to take it personally. Listen, you just relax. Make yourself comfortable. That work for you? 
New girl? Let me know if there's anything I can get you. Hmm. Bit of a slow news day around here. Ah, well, speaking of news, some folks are convinced David Barron, you know, the SSN anchor, is some sort of Freestar sympathizer. <laughs> Ridiculous, if you ask me. Sure, they ran a couple of stories about Aquila's city that weren't totally critical, but come on. Have you ever been? Anyway, that's the sort of high-stakes stuff people talk up while waiting on a flight. So glad you asked, aren't you? I can tell. Yep, spaceport traffic keeps me pretty busy. But just between you and me, I've got something in the works that'll change everything. You would love it, I guarantee. Only, I made a deal with the hauler to bring me some small samples of an ingredient I think will make all the difference. But it never showed up. Security got wind, and the whole lot was impounded. Now they're... I submitted all the paperwork, believe me. And really, I'm not even certain this is what I need to finish the recipe. I, just, I need to get my hands on that cargo. I really do. It's gonna keep me awake nights if I don't try. Before we say anything else, I am in no way asking you to do anything that might violate any of the many, many laws in place here in New Atlantis or the... This is just one friend talking to another friend, asking if maybe that friend could possibly find a way to get her important cargo out of the impound. And if, hypothetically, that were done in a less than 100% legal way, well, that might not be the worst thing in the world. You, uh, with me on this? Surely you're not seriously considering this course of action. The last thing we need is UC security on our backs. God, you have no idea what a relief this is. I'm obviously not expecting you or anyone to go in guns blazing and taking hostages or something. I know a few things, but not much. The cargo is being held down at the spaceport, not in the security office. Still, they use the same access cards. If you had one, it'd work. How or why you would have a UC security access card is none of my business, of course. Beyond that, the ship decks over there might also be able to get in. I don't know any of them, or I'd be talking to them instead of you. No offense. I'm not worried. I'm annoyed. Wait, are you saying I should be worried? See you around. Pleasant change of scenery. Been up there, huh? Space? Must be cool. I never get to go to space. Hey, this really isn't a good place for civilians to be hanging around. There's something I can help you with? Yeah... I can't really just let you in there. The answer's still no. Yeah, I hope so. I don't like your tone. I'm gonna need you to clear out of here, or else I'll have to call security.
scanned as you enter the city. Please keep moving. Okay. No. Hey there. New. Hope life is treating you well. Oh, no way. You really got it? I probably don't want to know what you did to get this, right? I certainly hope not. Well, look, I can assure this will all be worth it in the end. On top of that, you get free drinks. Not, not like unlimited free drinks. But you want a little pick-me-up now and then? I got you covered. I need some time to work on what comes next. Catch you later. Been a long time since I've been to Mars. Soul system doesn't get it. Registration accepted. You may now proceed through the historical displays in the orientation hall, or continue on to the examination. In 2050, humanity learned the Earth's magnetosphere would collapse sometime in the next half century, eliminating all life on the planet. Decisive action was required, but the secure transport of an entire civilization would demand a new kind of cooperation. A new kind of courage, and a new kind of union. Thus, in 
2159, the United Colonies were formed to make that journey possible. Just one year later, the Galileo, the first of many colony ships, touched down here on Jemison, beginning a new era of human history, the age of the United Colonies. The effort and planning it must have taken to evacuate literally the entire planet. Can you imagine? The logistics alone must have been mind-boggling. What? One of the displays broken? I'll call up your maintenance. From their foundation, the United Colonies strove to provide all their citizens with opportunity, security, and peace. But there were those among the UC that still wanted something more. Independence. So in 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation, granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds and form their own sovereign powers. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 2188, later followed by House Maroon, revealing themselves to the universe in 2230. The result of the Centaurus proclamation has always left me torn. So much conflict arose as a result. Was it worth it? It was only in 2230 that the faction known as House Varun first made contact with the rest of the settled systems. Founded by the passengers of a colony ship that had left New Atlantis and disappeared four decades earlier, House Varun was a faction unlike any other. A theocracy dedicated wholly to the beliefs of its isolationist founder, Janan Varun. House Varun initially made overtures of peace towards the rest of the settled systems. They claimed their only intention was to spread the word of their god, the Great Serpent. But none could have guessed that this worship might take the form of a bloody war, the Serpent's Crusade. The Free Star Collective was initially founded in 2188, when the citizens of Aquila banded together with the pleasure city of Neon in mutual defense. But in 2194, after the deployment of a UC medical star station in orbit around their world, the citizens of Narion also requested to join the Collective. The resulting rise in tensions between the Free Star Collective and UC culminated in the Settled System's first intergalactic conflict, the Narion War. Despite a decisive victory by the UC, the colonies permitted the citizens of Narion to join the Collective, forming the basis for the fiercely independent union that persists to this day. Beginning in 2240, House Varun forces declared all-out war on the rest of human civilization, initiating the Serpent's Crusade. Over the next 23 years, thousands of Freestar, UC, and independent souls were killed by agents of House Varun in the name of their Serpent God. It was only with the death of their founder in 2263 and the succession of his heir, Jarek, that House Varun finally sued for peace. There remains, however, select members of House Varun who refuse to recognize the cessation of hostilities their leaders established. Even after House Varun's mysterious disappearance, these zealots remain a threat to all who encounter them. Their pacification, a goal of all space. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions, none was more brutal than the recent colony war between the UC 
at the Freestar Collective. Set off by the unauthorized Freestar colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308, a direct violation of the Nereon Treaty, the colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat platforms, or mechs. Even bioengineered alien creatures. The infamous UC Xeno weapons. It was only in 2311 at the Battle of Cheyenne that the scales finally tipped. The Free Star Collective, utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield, successfully crippled the superior United Colonies Navy. After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Free Star Collective offered terms of peace, which the colonies, out of an interest in staving off any further human costs, accepted. The galaxy has been rebuilding ever since. The colony war was a horrible conflict that irreparably wounded the civil systems. There were times I felt that it would never end. Few settled worlds were left untouched by the colony war. But nowhere could the viciousness of modern warfare be seen more clearly than on the free star planet of Nera. Initially occupied by invading United Colonies forces as a forward operating position, repeated attempts to take and retake the planet by collective forces led only to devastation. Swaths of the world were transformed into scorched husks, a nightmarish testament to the depths of human ingenuity and human cruelty. And today, Nera remains a continuing reminder to the horrors of unfettered war. Slates said Terramorphs can control people's minds. But that can't be true. I bring her here almost every day to stare at this thing. In the midst of the colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. A rare but pervasive threat to all human settled worlds, Terramorphs swept over the city, seemingly out of nowhere, on a scale never before seen in recorded history. Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city, the outbreak, and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC to this day. After the devastation wrought by the colony war, the UC and the Freestar Collective came together to ratify a treaty that became known as the Armistice. Both sides agreed to a vast reduction in standing forces and that Xeno weapons and mech warfare would be outlawed. All related research was sealed away, accessible only in cases of dire emergency. But the Collective had another demand that the active commanders of the UC military stand trial for their actions. The United Colonies, in the interest of peace and galactic security, agreed. In 2311, three United Colony senior officers were found guilty. Commander Henry Durant, General Indira Rastogi, and Fleet Admiral Francois Senon. 
known better as Ve Victus. All were sentenced to death for their actions, bringing the colony war to a close and returning peace to the galaxy at long last. I was a strong supporter of the Armistice. All of the terrible weapons that both sides used against one another. It had to end. Hey there. Saw your ship come in. Nice ride. It was into this new world that the Vanguard was born. An official branch of the UC Navy, the Vanguard is the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet, serving a myriad of security, logistical, and reconnaissance roles. And after a sufficient length of service, UC citizenship is guaranteed to every Vanguard member. Open to all captains, regardless of origin, the Vanguard is leading the charge to protect and support the citizens of the United Colonies, wherever in the galaxy they may be. on their feet and only UC citizens have the opportunity to purchase property getting the chance to live in one of the most beautiful cities in the settled systems by joining the Vanguard today you too can begin earning your place here in the heart of galactic civilization as a citizen of the United Colonies bit of time in simulators just like these. They're startlingly realistic. Have fun. Ah, you must be our new applicant. I'm Proctor Samuelson. This, while I can't answer that question directly, I will say this. Due to the solitary nature of our work, resourcefulness is a critical tool in any Vanguard pilot's repertoire. You're permitted, even encouraged, to use whatever tool you're able to find in there. Vanguard assignments can often include both space and ground combat. It'd be bad for both you and the United Colonies to not ensure you're adept in both capacities before sending you out on your first real assignment. Of course, you'll be running through a high-realism combat flight simulation, engineered by members of the UC science staff, right here in MAST. Your task is to defeat at least three tiers of simulated opponents. Accomplish that and you pass the exam and can then proceed on to your probationary mission. However, if you defeat more than three tiers of enemies, your required enlistment time for citizenship will be reduced, and your enlistment bonus increased. But you're welcome to try as many times as you like before returning to Commander Tuwala to proceed on to the next step in your application process. We'll only keep the highest score you manage to achieve in there. Just head in whenever you're ready. Flight Simulation Chamber Applicant, currently in orbit around a high-detail recreation of a remote world. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair.
exam is simple. Defeat as many tiers of opponents as you can before your ship is disabled. You must defeat at least three tiers of opponents to pass the exam. Good hunting, applicant. New targets active.
to the exit hatch to log your results, or restart the exam from the simulation's control terminal. Congratulations, applicant. You've passed. You can head up to Commander Tuwala to receive your final results and your probationary assignment. Or you're welcome to take another run at the simulation if you'd like to try and earn a better score. Willem, keep your best run. back. Everything go all right with the exam? Or did you have some questions you needed answered first? Ah, so these are your numbers that just came through then. Oh, excuse me for keeping you waiting. Let's get to it. So, looking at the data, hit every mural in the orientation hall, huh? A test of preparation and thoroughness. To trace the Vanguard values highly. Psychological results are all within expected levels. Navy doesn't have room for folks that'll fall apart the first time they're trying to outrun a homing missile. Now, how'd you do against your foes? Tier 4, not too shabby. The techs make us test each level of the Sim too. I can tell you that wave are some real artificial bastards. Good job putting them away. Hell of a job. I might even let you fly me around sometime. So then, looking at your results as a whole, and presuming you're successful in completing your probationary mission, you could have your UC citizenship after only... 10 years service. Pretty standard for combat assignments. But your performance in the simulator does mean I can offer a signing bonus. Help convince you to join the cause. 10 years might seem like a long time, but it's worth the climb if you wish to become a citizen. So, sounds to me like we've got Vanguard material on our hands. If you're interested, we could bring you on as a provisional member today. Get you the credits you've earned, then send you out on your probationary mission. First, though, all UC service people, provisional or otherwise, are required to swear an oath. So, you want to make this official? Commit yourself to the cause of the colonies? It's a big decision. John. You're not about to have my compatriot here sign some kind of contract that sells you their grandmother five years down the line, are you? Officer's honor, Sarah. This is honest work for honest credits. So, you ready to do the deed? Fantastic. Then just follow me. Wouldn't be right doing this where we couldn't see the skies. Now, raise your right hand. The motto of the Vanguard is Supra et Ultra, above and beyond. 
That is where we serve, beyond the furthest reaches of the United Colonies military, and with honor and duty above reproach. Do you swear to protect and defend the citizens of the United Colonies to the best of your abilities? And to uphold the values of the Vanguard, honor, loyalty, self-reliance, in all your actions as a member of the United Colonies Navy? I guess I'll take it. Then let me be the first to officially welcome you to the United Colonies Vanguard. Now, only thing left is getting you that probationary mission. And what I've got is comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plant on Tau Ceti II. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Place is as isolated as they come, so Brass wants a vanguard to deliver the repair suite and ensure anyone present is safe and secure. So, can the people of Tau Ceti II count on you? Oh, that's the spirit. Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you the repair suite plus your new recruit kit. Oh, and your advance. Give it your all out there. Supra et Ultra. You expecting me to jump down after you? Pull it for leeches, get it fixed up, and let her know we'll have it ready as soon as we can. Ah, you are new probationary then? Groot, it's my job to make sure all you rocket jockeys are ready for anything that comes at you up there. Now, Manifest says we're fitting you out with one comms... In addition to the standard issue welcome kit, med packs, some small arms, couple spare ship parts, all the essentials in case... My people will have everything on your ship before you lift off. Hmm. So... Paying a visit? Nice easy one for your first job. Just keep your head on swivel and you'll come home safe. Any questions before you head out? Then I won't keep you. Make us look good out there, recruit. isn't the same as the real thing. I'm in the mood for a mocha macchiato. How about you? People say I need more hobbies. Right, that was a good talk. It'll be hard to top it, but you always... 